Welcome everybody, welcome to Sin City Living. My name is Jason, I'll be bringing you today's episode. As always, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. We have constant content, content coming out every single week. I hope you guys like the new camera angle. If anybody doesn't like it, by all means, send us an email, put it in the comments. We'd be happy to switch back to the, uh, to the old camera angle if people prefer. So for today, I wanna to cover another low bankroll strategy. We kind of covered a very, very, very similar strategy not too long ago. This adds a small little twist to it, a uh, very small twist, but it's enough that I thought I'd go ahead and add it on in here just to uh, give people another option on how to play. So for this strategy, let's, uh, let's go ahead and start the player off with a $100 bankroll. It's a pretty low strategy, or pretty low bankroll at least, especially for out here in, in Vegas lately. Now, typically I would run this with a $5 table strategy. Um, and I may briefly go over, go over that near the end of the video, but for this one, we're probably gonna run it as, as a $10 strategy and the, or $10 minimum bet table. And the reason for that is that currently, under the current pandemic, it's almost impossible to find a $5 table. There are a few out there, I do know of a few out there at certain times of the day and such like this but for the most part, you're gonna find $10 tables. And even those, you're pretty much only gonna find off strip. You're gonna find, you can find $10 tables off strip. There are still off strip casinos that have 15, $25 as their minimum tables, but there are a lot of the smaller off strip casinos that do have $10 tables. So you can definitely find a $10 table at least. So we're gonna run this as a $10 table. As a $10 table, what we're gonna do is a $10 don't pass. As soon as there is a point, we'll use the nine as an example, you're gonna do the six and eight. Grab one too many. And then the next thing you're gonna do is all of the hard ways. And instead of setting them up here, I'm just gonna put it just like that. So you know it's all the hard ways is going to get the dollar back. If you're a dealer, never throw the chips to the players. All right, so this is the, this is the core fundamental part of the strategy. Now, we call this a low bankroll strategy. Really, this is the kind of strategy you want to play with about two to $300. And under the current climate of, of $10 minimum tables, if you're lucky, $15, $25 minimum tables in a lot of places. Um, I actually know of on-strip places that are $50 minimums, the smallest you're gonna find. A three, $400 bankroll is a low bankroll right now. And what, what you're looking at here is, it's kind of like the minor hedge in, the, in that if if a seven out immediately occurs, we're gonna lose we're gonna win ten dollars there, we're gonna lose twenty-eight dollars. So we're losing eighteen dollars. So it's minimizing the loss. We may have thirty-eight dollars on the table, but if a seven out comes, we're only gonna lose eighteen of it. Now, the spot that, that it can hurt is winners. But we're not we're not adding anything to uh, um, to our don't pass. We're not throwing any lays or anything out there. The, the don't pass is a minor hedge. What this strategy is really betting on is these two numbers. Betting on these two numbers and then hoping for the hard ways, which is where you get that minor change into it. And I want to show you how I personally would play the hard ways. Now, there are some strategies that will do this and we'll do this as a regression strategy. Something hits, they're going to take these down a unit and then they're going to, uh, to do it again. And if they hit again, then they're either gonna take it down entirely or they're just gonna go from there. And the reason for that is that they're trying to get one hit on it, which is to hit in one of these numbers, you have a 10 out of 36 chance. There's five ways each for these to hit. Um, their, their idea is that this hits, they win $14, they drop down to one unit each, so they only have $12 at risk, so now they are basically a free bet and they're hoping that the, the point does not roll or they will hit that and they will actually take the don't pass down as well, at which point now they have made $14, they have $12 at risk. It's, it's, a, it's a strategy, it's a, it's a grinder strategy, and it also doesn't include those hard ways. It's doable. This particular idea, this one does not work that way. We are not trying to, to come down on anything. And the reason for that is if either one of these hits, now we've made 
fourteen dollars in profit, correct? Um, although we are still down with what we have at risk. Now let's say a seven out occurs. We win ten here. We leave lose 28 so we have lost 18 but we hit one of these so we really only lost four dollars that's why I'm not a fan of regressing down on this one once something hits once something hits as things as things keep occurring you're likely to have a very very small loss and the idea with playing craps really is you want to catch these longer rolls and you want to have your bets able to take advantage of these longer rolls so with this strategy we're gonna keep our bets the same after the first hit now with the second hit, at the second hit is where we might start playing around. Now, depending on how conservative you are, you might go ahead and just take it, in which case we're going to do a 15 for 1, and we're just going to take it and same bet it. The third hit at the absolute most is where you want to start pressing things. Right? Because at this point, you've got $28 sitting right there. You have $28 in risk right here. So if a seven out comes, you're profiting ten dollars. If the point comes, you lost ten there, but you still made your money. You still made some money over here. Now, of course, you could get another point immediate seven out to wipe this stuff out. But your losses are very small at this point. If uh, if worst case scenarios start occurring, so now is where you want to start pressing things up. So the next one that hits, if you get paid your fourteen dollars, decide what you want to do. Do you want to press that point one unit? Do you want to press it all the way, and collect $2, and turn it into 28 Or do you want to press them both one unit, collect $2, and make them both 18 I personally would probably press them both. Now, what this is not including is if they're coming easy or hard. If they're coming easy, you're throwing in a dollar to keep your hard way up. You want to keep that hard way up if you're betting them. Uh, if it's coming hard, well, we'll get into how we're going to do the hard ways in just a second. So now we've pulled a little bit more profit. These are bigger. If they roll again, once again, you have a choice. What do you want to do? Do you want to press the, the initial bet? Let's say the 8 rolls. Do you want to press the 8 up to 30 and collect? Do you want to press them both up to 24 and collect a little bit? Do you want to press the 8 all the way up to 36 and collect the $3? It's entirely up to you at this point. Me personally, I'd probably go to 30 on this, but everybody's going to have a different way of playing this. It doesn't matter. You're already up a little bit. Any losses that occurred would be very tiny if, if they would exist at all. It requires some really bad worst case scenarios. So no matter what, you're up. You're up. So now that you're up off of your initial bet, this is where you're just trying to win. You want to go for it. Win. Let's win some money. Well, we're, we're up. This is a quote unquote free bet. So let's win some money. Let's go for it. I don't mean let's start throwing in money like on my power press methods where we're, we're just trying to jack our bets up the table max as fast as possible. But let's start increasing them. Even just a little bit. Increase it one unit at a time. If that eight rolled, you, you say press me one unit, you're still collecting $15 and you made your bet just a little bit bigger. If it comes again, that eight, you're going to say press me up one unit, you're going to collect $22 and you're going to go up to 30 If that eight comes again, you say press me up one unit, you're going to have to throw in a dollar, but you're going to collect 30 so even just the one unit presses, you start, you start collecting a little bit. If you're pressing two units or you're doing the, uh, for instance, from here, let's say the six rolls, I would probably press it up to 30. And then from 30, I would likely throw them in $2, collect a green. If it rolls again, I'm going to 60. Um, either way, I'm, all, I'm constantly collecting constantly collecting and making these bets bigger and again it's a free bet so what's that twist I was saying about the hard ways how would I do the hard ways well to me and to a lot of players that play craps a lot and and tend to to press their bets and 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 go for it they tend to look at the hard ways as almost a throwaway bet it's a buck or it's four dollars we've got you know sixty dollars fifty dollars in in action that's actually in action that's that's being affected by almost every single row and place bets and stuff like that so the hard ways are almost a forgotten thing and it's a buck so their idea is who wants to win seven dollars or nine dollars is that life-changing money is that really affecting your next role is that building your bankroll seven dollars or nine dollars it's really not so what do most players do I know you guys can't see the six or eight on there, but let's say the hard four rolls. Most players 
not most, but players that play a lot are likely to say parlay. Let's turn that into $8. Why? Because should the hard four come again, now we're getting paid $56. That's another, another setup for you, or two, depending on how the rolls go. So that's, that's two more shooters you're likely to see on a dollar risk. Why not? What's it hurt? With the, the six and eight, it's even better because you parlay on that first one, you hit $10. If it hits again, you make $90. Do the, does that happen a lot? No, one in one in a thousand, really, because um, your odds are one in 36 for a hard way to roll. So then one in 36 for it to roll a second time. So more than one in a thousand, but it happens. The other night, we actually had a hard way roll four times without an easy way or seven coming. And fortunately for that player, he, was, he wasn't he was parlaying, but he was pressing. So he parlayed the first one. He had a dollar. It was a hard eight. I remember this fairly clearly. He had a hard eight, parlayed it to $10. Hit again, so he was going to get paid $90. We said, you know what, make it look like a quarter. You got it. Here's $75 off your $1 bet. It hit for the third time. Now we got paid $225, but he said, you know what, let's make it look like 50. Okay, here's your $200 profit off your $1, and it hit again. Hit again. He said, you know what, let's make it look like 100. We gave him 400 bucks off a dollar. Now the odds of that happening are fairly slim, but with the hard ways, people tend to look at it as, as kind of a forgotten bet. It's a throwaway bet. We're going to play the hard ways, play our $4, and throw in a dollar every so often when it, when it loses because we'll make our money off of here. And, uh, you know, just, just kind of forget about it until that once a month, once every other month where we hit our triple parlay or whatever it may be. That's what makes it kind of fun. This is the grind, boring part of the strategy. The hard ways are the exciting, fun part when it actually manages to hit. So this is a low bankroll strategy that you guys could certainly try out. If you're playing on a $5 table, you basically just cut everything down in half. You go to a $5 don't pass and you're going to do a $6.8 and a $6.6. .6. Still going to do a dollar in all the hard ways. If you manage to find a five dollar table, this is a, a strategy you could very viably play with a hundred dollar bankroll. I'd still recommend one hundred fifty to two hundred dollars, but you could play this with a hundred dollar bankroll and play for a fairly long time. Definitely a grind grinder strategy. And that is this particular low bankroll strategy. So thank you for watching. As always, please hit the like and subscribe buttons, and we will catch you next time.